272 right. and they don't have nothing to sell and right. yeah they live they live within Birmingham okay so they've got a small family so one, 175 and 272 yeah and, and the one at 272 is ready to go yeah they've they're paying in cash uh partial cash and they right. may leverage off uh, a mortgage with that what do you think? I think we should hold it out for a little bit more. Um, yeah. So, yeah, just for an update you on the offers, I reckon we can squeeze 275 out of them. Um, yeah. So, I'd be happy at 275. Pardon? I'd be happy at 275. So, it's Tuesday. I didn't work yesterday, unfortunately. Can you believe it? I felt like something was missing in my soul and my heart. But, you know what? Last week, I didn't actually, I had, I caught myself one meal. Now, typically, for those who know me, I cook every time. But I spent most of my time and money eating out. I was like, when I do that, my life's not in order. And everything started piling up and stuff like that. I even put butter beans out to soak and I didn't actually cook them. Yeah, that was the next story. But yeah, so I said to myself, you know what, tomorrow... Well, yesterday, Monday, I'm going to clear my whole crib to get a peace of mind, clear my environment and work in a in a nice, nice little environment so I can focus. And I spent literally eight hours. I didn't get to sleep till half one in the morning. I started around about, what, about five, six, something like that. It's just ridiculous. And my, my crib wasn't even like, for those who don't know what a crib is, I'm sure you know what it is. It's just like a house, flat. Residence, castle, whatever you want to call it, yeah. So I was like, you know what? It's been eight hours or so. My, my place is tidy, but you know the little things that just need really tidying. And it took the longest amount of time, but I'm back now. But anyway, enough of that. I'm about to have two investor calls uh, today. I've got two views booked in for tomorrow. I'm looking forward to that. One is the potential assisted sale with a lady, and another one is a lead that's in Coventry that came off the back of a referral. So I'm looking forward to seeing that gentleman. But today, just about getting these investor calls in, and I'm visiting Jim, the surveyor, at 11 a.m. because he was looking for a property to do his like viewing day. What he typically does is is a surveyor, and a lot of people within the property industry are not too sure about certain things when they when they come to viewing a property. So he's doing a viewing day to help people recognize faults and just allow them to gain confidence when assessing um, the extent of work that's needed on properties because refer prices are very important when evaluating deals. So if you're clued up on that, one, you can act quicker. And secondly, you can get your prices down to a T and then get the exact return or um, cash flow that you expect from a particular deal. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So, yeah, that's it for now. Stay tuned. So I'm here with a man, Jim. Jim, how you doing? What do you think of the floor? Have you got any advice for people? Beautiful. 100 year old floor. Perhaps a little bit more, but it's absolutely original. You can't do this now. You just can't get them like this. You see so many of them covered up. It's just gorgeous. Yeah. It's, a, it's a stunner. It's a great way to walk into the house. Um, it's a lovely house. And, um, you know, the, the, the layout. Now, so it's just really modernised. It's perfect for a small family, small, medium-sized family. Three bed. Um, nice area. It's a, it's not a bad street. I've, I've been on the street. I've done the the fifty yard walk either way up the, up and down the street. Lovely lovely area. Lovely little house. It'll be perfect. Here's a question for you though, Jim. Yes, Do mate. you think this adds value to the property and how? Definitely, definitely. Because the, this this house is is the core sector. Of the, this is one of the the busiest market sectors you can get. Everybody second time buyer. Medium-sized families are all looking for something like this. In this kind of area, this age of house, structurally sound, from what I've seen, I haven't uh, looked too closely at it, but from what I've seen, structurally sound, the good, a good age, period property, and this is the sort of thing, you get so many of them where this has been carpeted or, or covered or, or, or basically just ruined over the years. Um, it, it's not in perfect condition, there's a couple of minor cracks and everything, but it, it just, it's 
the reception is that you walk in, you see it straight away, and it just it's beautiful. It's yeah. absolutely gorgeous, and it just it just gives you that puts you in that period property frame of mind, Got, yeah. which you know puts your head in this market, in my view. Anything yeah. that puts you that step ahead is a good thing. Good some top tips there. So I'm actually here because I'm showing Jim Brown. He's got a viewing day intensive, is it? Property viewings intensive. Property viewings intensive, and it gives people confidence when they're looking to invest in property, or even if you are literally looking for a property yourself, and you don't want to get caught out with certain things that some owners may hide in the property. So it's here to inspect the property because it's got a few people that are going to be joining us on one of the 20th or 21st of May. 20th and the 21st, one on each day. One each day, which will allow people, if I'm getting this right, to understand what to look for when you're viewing the property so you don't get caught out financially or with your pants down, should we say? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> We've got our pants right up today, though. <laughs> it's suave. Look at this guy at the belt on as well. Look at that. Show him out. Whoa. Hey, hey, you know, when you're this good looking, you've got to put it out there. That's okay. it. All right, we're out, we're out. The windows are blown. A couple of units, but again, that's not a big job. What's in the shed? Is it just a storage shed? Yeah, storage. Everything besides from, uh, it's practically empty. But yeah. yeah, I've explained the view. This is just the seals that have been bust on here. So, yeah, what would you... I mean, you can replace just the units. The windows are about, I would say, about between 10 and 15 years old on the back. Mm -hmm. They're a bit older on the front. So, it's Wednesday, fresh cut alert. I'm not doing too bad, not doing too bad. So, it's a good and bad day. I've got mixed emotions about today because I've done some marketing for a two bedroom property in Buxton, very good price, very good cash flow that I put out there. So I've got two phone calls to make later on this evening for those who are actually interested in the deal. Um, you see, when it comes to leasehold properties, it's kind of hit and miss. As long as the cash flow is good, then people may be interested in it. Um, but the interest mainly lies in freehold properties, but it is what it is. But the bad news is, is that I've had no, let me tell you the good news. Good or bad? Let's do the bad first. Let's do the stick. So the stick is um, two sellers kind of cancelled their appointment. One of them did and rearranged for tomorrow, which I'm thankful for because I'm going to a networking event tomorrow and it's in the same area. So I'm like, okay, that's, that's fine with me. I'm not asking, please don't cancel. Uh, and the other one, the commentary one I told you about, he's kind of like in between whether he wants to sell or what doesn't want to sell and i'm thinking i'm going to travel about 45 minutes to get to Coventry to look at a property where the seller is not that motivated to sell so the cost of fuel at the fuel at the moment it's like should i you know what mm, i want to go but let's just go when it's more convenient for myself and just knock it out that way because he's confused and if i give him my offer you know it's not going to move very quickly on it so is there any point there is and there isn't in a way but it is what it is um and when he did give me a price a rough price what he wanted it didn't really stack up so i'm like it's been unrealistic at the moment it's unmotivated and i just put that on the on the pedestal um well back burner should say that pedestal at all wrong term to use but um yeah that's it so i look forward to that um the other good news is I spent like an hour on the phone to Mark about a potential assisted sale that I haven't told you about. I'm going to see it tomorrow. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. And also, remember the deal I told you about? If you see my first vlog from last week, you know I'm in a bit of negotiation with the property at the moment. Um, but she wouldn't accept to 10, unfortunately. And when I really got down to the surface, because whenever you're um, having conversations with sellers, it's important to understand as to why they're selling. Um, it, in fact, shall I say, when you're in my line of work and it's important for you to understand the set of circumstances in order to match whatever solution or outcome you can offer them, it's important to understand in depth what the situation is. In compared to like an estate agent who will just say, okay, that's the valuation of the property. Let's bang it on the market and let's get some buyers because it doesn't match. It's, it's the same line of work, but 
there's different complexities to it so yeah um so yeah that's that one and um i'm waiting for her to kind of get back to me I, she said i can't do 210 because she's got debt here and debt here but at the end of the day i did ask her what would cover everything so she's like that would but i said look the only way i can bump it up just like a little bit i know you're outside the agent's uh agreement which is about a month so if you wanted to then you know it's down to your discretion if you wanted to do that so that's where we're at the moment uh so yeah that's where we're at but yeah until next time i've actually left my house to get some work done you see i tend to only get like a f about three or four hours productive work done but an hour of that was taken by an hour and a half was taken from like the phone calls and stuff like that so that really occupied my space of mind and my focus for the whole day and um yeah typically like three four hours is enough but the fact that i woke up late it doesn't help my situation anymore if i woke up really early i didn't because i went to bed like two o'clock and i had to get some sleep uh, i didn't manage to get that so i've left my house to get some fresh air to go to a calf and see if i can get at least two hours of, of working time i need to book some viewings in for friday friday tends to be my viewing day or wednesday afternoon like now but it's not so friday get some i've already booked one in already um uh, from a guy who is uh, looking to sell for the agent but i got him before he got to the agent he hasn't signed anything just yet just a little tip typically if you get them before that you can do a little deal if it makes sense and also stanley got in touch with me today about a preston property that he's got for sale so i'm looking forward to seeing what he's got for me as well so yeah yeah deals are coming along so i'm just sure about keeping a deal flow moving along very swiftly and i apologize for my first video like 52 minutes and i apologize for this video as well it should be actually more quicker so from from my videos forth right now i'm gonna be it has quick the hair looks greasy just now i put a bit of oil in there but it looks a bit mad but um yeah i'm gonna be quick as possible with these videos so i'm gonna just get them on and you don't have like a long uh, vlog of me like rambling on. I need you to get some value out of it. I'm hoping that I've got, I've given you a bit of value. Jeez, my nails a bit. Got seasoning in, jeez. I've seasoned some food literally about two hours ago. And it's bad. You know what I've learned, right? When I prep my food during the morning or afternoon, yeah, it, it kills a lot of my time, but I'm hungry at the same time. I need to, I've told myself, only cook during the evenings when you're finished work and then you can start the day fresh. So, you know, I, I never I never understood why some people buy takeouts or have maids. They do that because they make great use of their time. I've spent like 45 minutes this afternoon cooking food, but somebody could actually order food, save themselves like 20 minutes and earn more during that hour, which is leveraging your time to a next level. But I, I enjoy cooking, it's one of my hobbies, but I do it inappropriately during working hours at times if I haven't prepped during the evening because I'm trying to catch up with work that I didn't get done. You know them ones, but yeah. Um, you said it wouldn't like, cost any more than two hours ago. And also I'm, I'm working on a deal in uh, uh, Lake District the seller just literally popped up on the message that's what i was reading so i'm looking forward to that i'm going to do the final dd on that work and that deal before before sending her the heads of terms she's already got an offer on the table but if mine comes around about that mark she'll go with me and she'll help she'll allow me to sell it for her which i know it'll, it'll be a good sale because it's very close to it's in practically the peak district almost so it'd be good for service accommodation or has a standard um a buy to let this is like three floors of properties three floors of properties like three uh studios or it can be converted into a big house whatever the situation but yeah looking forward to that i'm going to do some dd on that but yeah you know what rambling on peace until next time Shush. oh damn i've got two i've got one viewing today on the uh property that i'm selling so i've already got offers in as well so 
it's looking good so far it's looking good we already already got offers on the table i wanted the last viewings on saturday i think got two more on saturday and then we just put the off more offers towards the owner and see where he wants to take it because it's looking good it's looking good it's looking good yeah peace so it's thursday i've literally just left costa and i'm stuck in traffic but um i bought my viewings for tomorrow now typically i would book viewings like early in the week i tend to keep friday as my only viewing day besides some uh wednesday afternoons if depends on what i'm doing if i can do viewings all day on friday i'd do that um so i booked about five viewings in for tomorrow it's a mixture between agents and direct to sellers um i was in costa and i was like, talking on the phone and this guy approached me he said bro are you um you're into property and i heard you xyz and he goes yeah i'm trying to get into service accommodation i said okay yeah I've, I've done some rent to rent as you may know rent to rent is basically where you guarantee a rent to a landlord and then you're legally allowed to sublet it to make a bit of a margin for yourself um not only is, is it for yourself but it's for a landlord who's wanting to have guaranteed rent e.g a fixed income coming in each month and the rent to rent company or company let or company leasing it from you tends to manage the property free for you and there's no void periods in between any tenancies because they cover any void periods you just get a fixed sum each month sometimes it works out for landlords and sometimes it it doesn't and sometimes it works out for everybody involved when well, it is what it is so yeah that's briefly what a rent to rent is and he reached out to me he said yo can you know you know nice to meet you um i'm gonna need some mentoring and stuff like that or even you know answers and stuff like i said i don't mind answering I'm, I've, I've never really mentored anybody um but i have been considering it like quite recently simply off the basis of like um like i have a lot of a lot of value to add to people like i know i can get somebody their first rent to rent or service accommodation like at least their one the first one i can't get people to like four or five because i haven't got to four or five i only had uh two service accommodations i've kept one of them um being rented out and the other one that i've got i'm selling for the landlord at the moment so i know the strategy i know what you need to do to get one underneath your back and i know what you need to do to make it a success so i just said look reach out to me when you're ready and we'll take you from there so um I give him my Instagram, he give me his car, he's got his own little business. So look forward to seeing if I can help him or not do what he wants to do. But yeah, back to the topic. I'm looking forward to viewing this tomorrow. I've got two deals in my hands at the moment still. Um, one near Lake District and the other one um, that is, um, what is it now? Yeah, I'm still waiting for it. The seller's got to make a decision today whether they want to move forward or not. So, yeah, that's it. But looking forward to tomorrow. I get to view some properties, baby. Yeah, looking forward to it. But, yeah, until next time. I'm at a property networking event today. I'm at the Florence Cornwall Row, Birmingham City Centre. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> so, we're at the end of the networking session. So I'm here with the, with, what do we call you? The leader, do we call you the, the organizer? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The hostess or the monsters, that's what I call That's the it. one, that's the one, you got it, yeah. I came all the way from London just to come to this networking event and I was not disappointed. And that is commitment. That is commitment. Yeah. You show, you're showing me off because I'm, I've came that far, I'm like, and this gentleman just came from London. Here we go, you see. It was worthwhile, it was worthwhile. Absolutely fantastic. 100%. Thank you so much. So bro. the next one is each month. Each month, every month, last Thursday of every month, and it's going to be in Birmingham, so we're looking at either Florence or St Paul's house. So we keep it posted, keep it on LinkedIn, keep it on Instagram, and keep it on Facebook. Lovely. Well, thank you for your time this evening. Thank and you. And thank you for connecting the people here because I made some really good connections and we fortified our relationships. Absolutely. And Shoppy, Shoppy is just about to come and uh, also get into the... Uh, come along, Shoppy. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to try and come to you, London. You deserve to be. Look at that. Oh, yes. Name, man. So, if you can just add that Shoppy's come all the way from London. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, Shoppy's come all the way from London. Yeah, uh, he's our franchise support. And he will be also attending, potentially, 
future events. And anybody who wants to go to London and support his events as well, please do. And of course, you can meet some amazing people to network. Sounds good, sounds good. Peace, thank, thank you. you so it's Friday, it's viewing day. I tend to keep my viewings all in one day if I can. I think I said that like three times this week during the vlog. But anyway, good news. Um, so a lead that I followed up with, like I had like played chess with this seller in his house and all sorts, uh, like a month and a half or so ago. But it turns out he's in a bit of problems and um, you know, his family helped him out eventually, which is good. Um, his son from like Italy decided to buy the property and they're gonna pull it in, you know, their kid's name and all that stuff. So yeah, it's good. It's good for them. It's kind of bad for me because I was hoping to sell it for him. Because uh, as you may know, I don't charge any sellers to sell their property at all. I do take a small fee from my buyers. But on this occasion, right, you know, it just goes to show like I tried to help him I've offered him advice about you know selling it himself or if I can sell it but his son eventually he, he, he's actually going for the process of uh, buying it from him but he said you know what thank you so much for your help and you know you know there's not many good people out there that want just simply want to help and I was I was thankful for that really uh, but the main thing was is that look at that the power of the whole the whole look at this this is proper look at that the powder the whole traffic just to let the kids go but but anyway that woman's not taking no chances over there but um yeah but it was just thankful that i was just wanted to help him and you know he's uh, this big project project that he's had it's been ripped off by some builders so now he just said key do you know anybody who can do the work so you know, I've called up a few people that I know. We need some gas plumbing, needs plastering, it needs electric done. So uh, I brought the lads around this morning to have a look at that property and uh, get them a fair quote. So they're gonna send me the quote later on. We'll take it from there. But um, I, my, my first viewing that I had, which was in uh, Bearwood today, um, I'm in the middle. Um, <laughs> this is the way it gets really good. This is where it gets really good. I got this property before it went to the market and the owner hasn't even signed the agency agreement. Now, for those that know, some agents will tie you into a contract which will give them exclusivity to sell that deal uh, during that period. If they don't sell it, then it lapses and then you're no longer in the agreement. However, anybody who they've introduced to that property, they are you are liable to pay a fee because practically they've done all the groundwork for you to market the property and then sell it. So yeah, it's only right. But anyway, on this occasion here, I am waiting. We was going back and forth. He said, well, how, how, how can you be different to the agent? And they're gonna charge me two grand or so. I said, look, instead of you paying two grand up front to them, and getting tied into a contract and then um you know bothering the tenants about viewings and all that stuff then you know i don't charge you anything i get a qualified buyer who's who pays a reservation fee with me so they're financially committed and based off the numbers if it works for them they will take the deal and typically i, I introduce two buyers to the to the table who are financially qualified and willing to, you know, put their money where the mouth is. And uh, he got into a bit of qualms with the uh, tenant whilst he was there and I overheard it. So that is the first sign that, you know, the tenant's getting a bit eerie about the situation. Now, that's a bad thing, really bad thing, because I think that he didn't organize it properly or something like that, but it goes to show that a tenant can switch around just like that. As you imagine, he wants to sell the property, but they may want to stay there. You know, they've been there for five years or so, but you can tell where the the conflicts um, or the clash is gonna is gonna be caused because like, I want to keep this property and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, these are rambling on. The point being, is that I can get the job over the line quicker than the agent because it's bank holiday weekend. They need to then like, you know, prepare the property in terms of take photos or video and then market the property and get it on right move after the weekend. I said, look, 
give me till Tuesday and we can work something out. In fact, I didn't say give me till Tuesday. I said, give, you know, how many days can you give me to get this sold? He said, I'll give you a week or so. No, I asked for a week, but he said, let's just do Tuesday then, till Tuesday. I said, ah, oh, Tuesday. Okay, no worries. Let me see um, if I can make a few calls and get this done for you. And that's it, that's the update. But I'm going to see a few uh, properties today. Um, I need to follow up on another property um, that we want to get over the line. So yeah, that's a little update, a little update from me. I'm getting used to these videos now. Accountability, the momentum's building once again. I love it. So I know I have to post this on Sunday. So it's all good. I made a TikTok yesterday as well. Check it out. Property with Keen. There's a really good tips on there. Bye for now. Boy. Yes, sir. Oh, that's the end of the networking session. It's literally 10 o'clock. Made some really good connections. I have to thank Bina for just taking the time out and putting on such an event and allowing people to just meet. It's just a good platform. Met some really good connections today. So I'm looking forward to um, catching up with them, seeing where business can be created and all that good stuff. So yeah, tomorrow is viewing day. So check it out. So far, so good with the viewers today. Just left a off market deal as well with the seller. They just literally want a good cash offer so they can just move straight away got a bit of emotional attachment to the property so they just want a, a good offer that offers speed and uh, certainty and they're willing to take a bit of a cut on the price just to move now when I go into property I never really understood why people would take a discount on their property like they can achieve much more but it all depends on the circumstances of that seller if you can help them with that instead of waiting like three months then trust me they are willing to take a little bit of a cut and it reminded me when i was selling furniture at uh, one of the properties that we that we had i didn't care what i got for it i was like if i even get a tenner for the wardrobe even though i had it advertised like 25 i just wanted to get rid of it and only then i started to realize you know sellers speed what, what they need to move in so every as i was saying every set of circumstances are very different don't have one paintbrush and just brush it with everybody just like in life we shouldn't do that but um yeah so far so good the sun is blazing currently in west bromwich yeah so yeah on to my next one now and then after that i'm gonna um i might go to the range it's local but yeah peace